When it comes to investing in the stock market, one concept that comes over and over again is book value and more specifically book value per share. In this video, I'm going to share with you step by step how to calculate book value per share, but most importantly, why this metric matters and how you can use it to find valuable stocks to invest in. And if you stay until the end of this video, I'm going to share with you how you can calculate this metric for any company you like automatically. Okay, so before we get into what is the book value per share calculation, I just want to give you a little walkthrough as to what is book value in the first place. Because once we understand that, then it's very simple to turn that value into the per share value by simply dividing that number by the number of shares outstanding. So what is the book value? Book value is essentially the value that accountants think that a business is worth. And this value is derived very simply. What you do is you take a look at a company's balance sheet and you look at their total assets, which is the sum of their current assets plus their non-current assets. And then you subtract that number minus the total liabilities. And the total liabilities is the sum of the current liabilities plus the non-current liabilities. The current word is used to differentiate between short term and long term. So for assets, that basically means that you can liquidate, which means turn into cash these assets faster. And non-current assets are assets that are hard to turn into cash. They take a while for that to happen. For liabilities, these are obligations that need to be paid faster, meaning like I have to pay them now, whereas long-term liabilities or non-current liabilities are the ones that need to be paid off in the future. So over a longer period of time. And overall assets are things that produce economic value for a business, whereas liabilities are obligations that need to be paid off. So just to summarize, book value is essentially when you take the total assets minus the total liabilities, and that gives you the total shareholders equity, which is also known as the book value. This is an important number to know because it tells you as a shareholder, the company has this assets and it also has this total liabilities. So how much is left for me as a shareholder after the liabilities are paid from the assets? Now book value per share is very simple. After you know the book value of a company, all you have to do is divide that number by the number of shares outstanding. So as you can see all together, this is the book value per share formula. So you take the shareholders equity. Sometimes you subtract the preferred equity. This is depending on your own preference. You can also leave it alone. And then what you do is you divide this number by the total outstanding common shares. But now what I want to show you is how do you calculate this number on your own? Just looking at the balance sheet values. Okay, so the first step to calculate the book value per share is to get the company's financial statements. So in this case, we're going to use Apple as an example. And I'm going to be using Y sheets to get the financials simply because that way we can have them on Excel and perform the calculation more easily. You can also go to another website of your own preference and do follow the same process. So as you can see with Y sheets, uh, we got all the financials plus key metrics and financial growth. And what you see is that right here on the key metrics, the book value per share is calculated. So if I highlight this, Zoom in, you can see that the value for 2022 is 3.12, 378, and then 377. But the question here is how was this number calculated? And that's where we're going to get into and we're going to do the calculation ourselves. So starting with the balance sheet right here, we can zoom in. This is for Apple. It goes back historically for many years. And here we can find the total current assets, total non-current assets, and then here's the sum of the total assets. Same thing with the liabilities. And altogether, the total stockholders' equity is already calculated, so we could do that ourselves, or we could take this number. Let's do it ourselves. So in that case, we're going to take the total assets minus the total liabilities. And you can see that the number is identical. So we're going to get rid of this so that way we don't take as much space. 
And now that we know what the total stockholders equity, what do we need to do? So this is the book value. Now we have to turn it into the book value per share. So book value per share, it's going to be equal to the total stockholders equity divided by the number of shares outstanding. So it depends at uh, the source that you're looking at to see the number of shares outstanding for white sheets. You can find that on the income statement. So if I zoom in, you can see that here in this case, we have the weighted average shares outstanding and also the diluted number. In this case, we're going to use this value. And now the formula is completed. Click enter. And as you can see, this gives us the 312. And this is exactly the same as the value that we saw before. And you can also see the rounding right here. Okay, so as you can imagine, calculating this value, the book value per share for every company you analyze would be a pain in the ass. And for this reason, we highly recommend that you check out Y Sheets because you can get all of the company's book value per share very quickly, along with a whole bunch of other metrics. We have entire tutorials on this on our channel, but here's the simple overview. So use the wise function and then we're going to use book value per share as our parameter. Lock it in. We could use TTM. So that way we're able to compare the numbers regardless of the different fiscal years and seasonality that might be taking place for the companies. And as you can see now the functions loading and we're going to drag it across so we can get this value for all these different companies. You can see more as to how the function works on the right menu. However, here we get all of the book value per share numbers. And there you go. Now we can compare these companies uh, more easily. What I recommend is that, of course, you pick companies that are relevant and comparable. In this case, these are just random companies just to provide you with an example. But you get the idea. Now that you have the book value per share, what you can do is compare this important value with the price of these particular companies. For that, you can use the wise price function. So in this case, here's how it works. And it provides you with historical and real time price data. So in this case, all you have to do is just type enter wise price, select the list of symbols, enter the parameter, which in this case is going to be price. And as you can see, now we get all the prices of these companies and now we can compare them with the book value per share. So that way we can get a little bit of an indicator to see whether a company could be overvalued or undervalued. And here we could decide to do more research into any particular companies that pique our interest. Now, how do you know if a company is undervalued or overvalued potentially using this method. The way that you do that is by looking at the difference between the two numbers. So this is something that we could easily calculate. So we could take this number minus this. And if the difference is too big, it could mean that the company may be under overvalued. And if the difference is small, it could mean that the company is undervalued. And the reason why is because you're paying a price for this company that has a book value close to its price, which means that if the company were to liquidate, you would likely end up in a break even situation at least. Now, this method is not flawless and is not the perfect method whatsoever to find valuable stocks to invest in, but it does give you a good indicator as to the price that a particular company it's trading at relative to its book value per share. What a lot of analysts like to do is to think of this as a multiple. And the way that you can do that is to take the price and then divide it by the book value per share. And this gives you the book value per share multiple that the company is trading at. So in this case, what that means is that here, let me put this in the right formatting. What this means is that this particular company is trading at 6.76 times its book value. And you can see the results for the other companies. As you can imagine, the companies that have a lower multiple may be more potentially more attractive investment opportunities. The last thing to keep in mind when performing any of these calculations is that what is most important is to look at the company's balance sheet. And for this, it is important to look at the company's annual report to see what is the company counting as assets and what is the company counting as liabilities. 
accounting policies are very important to know that that specific business is putting on, on its books the right values. Otherwise, you may have to make adjustments to make the numbers accurate for your particular analysis. Now you know how to calculate book value per share, why this metric matters, and most importantly, how you can use it to find potential stocks to invest in. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification zone so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's gonna allow you to take your investing game to the next level. I'll see you in the next one.